to another video and this week we are having another look at the Propel X4S. Um, I've had this for a little while now and I've been riding around on it and really enjoying it. So now's the time to give a little review of my feelings and thoughts on this board after trying it out on various trails and taking it out for the last few weeks. I have my notes on my phone, I shall go through them one by one. Uh, so first of all the ride. I am pleasantly surprised by the ride on this board. I was expecting when I looked at it, it to be really big and clunky and it just looks like it won't ride very well. But I was so surprised. It's super carvy on the roads and it's really stable on um, off-road woodland, stuff like that. I had the spring set up super loose and it carves, okay, not like an Evolve, not like a double kingpin, but it carves pretty well, it moves pretty nimbly. Um, super impressed by how it handles. I just brought it out in the way, uh, some off-road and some woodland trails now. I forgot to bring the spanner to do up the uh, the springs a bit, so it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit twitchy for <laughs> grass roots and like, tree roots and stuff like that, but um, yeah, it's pretty good. So the suspension is entirely adjustable. You can adjust every spring on this board individually. So if you want this, the front to be a bit more bouncy, to pop over stuff and the back not so, um, not so springy, you can do that. All the springs underneath are uh, adjustable as well. So you can set how, how loose the carve is, a bit like doing up the, um, the nuts on your kingpins on your regular board. Um, and if you find you're a bit heel heavy or a bit toe heavy, you can adjust each spring to, uh, to balance the board out really nicely, which is a pretty cool feature. The price of the board I was super impressed with. So in the UK, Pink Oak are selling this board for about 2,000 pounds. Really, really impressed by that. Um, I'll drop a link in the description below. If you're in the UK, check out, um, check out Pink Oak. And if you're anywhere else in the world, I'll leave a link straight to um, Propel's website. But for £2,000, this, this is a pretty decent bit of kit, actually. Battery is easy hot swappable. You um, undo one clip, slide the battery out, undo two plugs, and you can put another one in straight away. I think the battery is around about £500, I'll have to check, so pretty much the same as a GTR battery. Although the battery is hot swappable, it's very big, it's very bulky. It would be quite awkward to have in a backpack, so, I would say if you're carrying another one, I would leave it in the car, go out, hit some trails, come back, grab a drink, sort the battery over and go out again. It's not the kind of battery I would like to be carting around in my backpack at all. 10 inch wheels on this, the biggest wheels I've ever ridden on a board. I thought riding seven inch ATs was a bit of a treat. Um, and then riding eight, uh, eight inches on the Tramper was amazing. Hitting the trails with this on 10 inch wheels, we rode Box Hill uh, last week or the week before, and we did some, uh, where all the cyclists go up the steep hill, we went off-road version of that. And it was incredible. There was a, a speed hump at one point down this little bit of private road. Speed hump, and on the other side of the speed hump, which I didn't see, was a massive hole. And as soon as I saw it, I thought, oh, oh here we go. <laughs> Can I come straight off? And the combination of these 10 inch tires and that really good suspension just went straight over the top i didn't even realize there was a bump in a hole very very impressed um although saying that i was a little bit blase today ah oh, sun's coming out sweet oh, okay i just got murdered by the sun uh, i was getting a little bit blase with these 10 inch wheels and this really good suspension and i was just mobbing through the um through the fields here not really looking where i was going because i thought I didn't have to and I stuffed the front wheel straight down a rabbit hole. And I did come off. Um, it wasn't too fast, which is a pleasant chilled ride, I suppose, but um, still just a you know warning, don't get too blase about having 10 inch wheels and suspension. Still pay attention to where you're going. Saying that, this thing has handled more bumps and lumps and stuff than, than any other board I've ridden. Power modes on this, I might have mentioned before, there's um, four miles an hour, uh, four kilometers an hour, sorry. Uh, 10 kilometers an hour and then full out, full speed. 
so this could do with tweaking a bit um, I know this board is still pre-released the version I have and there might be some tweaks coming power modes kind of need sorting out it's it's all or nothing really some points I've got them listed on my phone here as bad points they're not necessarily all bad they're just niggles and, and things that might uh, I think might be tweaked um, so taking this board anywhere 27 kilos it's really bulky it's crazy to even lift up into the boot of your car I did experiment taking this on the tube that was a really silly idea um, I'll never do that again I think you need to plan ahead I've driven to the car park next to this park dumped the board on the floor got on it I'm gonna ride it around the woods I'm gonna drive it back to the car chuck it in the boot um, there's going to be no carrying this board anywhere or even dragging it. It's still too heavy to drag around. So if you get one, just be kind of aware that you need somewhere you can drive to to drop this board off. The manual I found was um, not really helpful. It still says Cycle Eagle on it, so I'm, I assume it's still a pre-release. I know the guys at Pink Oak, uh, they said they might rewrite a manual for the UK, which would be really cool. Um, as it stands in pre-release, the manual is terrible and I think YouTube really is the best place to get your answers to questions. The remote, um, it's um, hopefully again still in pre-release, the buttons don't really match up with what the board does. Hitting reverse doesn't put it in reverse, it just changes I think power mode or something, I can't remember. Um, it's, it's pretty bad and where you hold the remote in your hand you're covering up the screen so you can't really see any info on the screen while you're holding it and riding. And also there's quite a lot of detail on there, two batteries, um, speed, all this kind of stuff. So they've tried to fit too much info onto one very tiny screen, which is, um, at, it's not really usable. Um, maybe when you stop you can look at it, but I don't really rate the remote very much. Um, it, as far as going and stopping works, it's fine. So I know on the first version of the Cycle Legal board they had a little bit problem with uh, connections from the remote to the um, ESC. So the aerials on this board are now external, which is fine, they work really, really well. But I'm a little concerned with aerials sticking out on a board that's designed to go off-roading. Uh, I'm just a little bit of a sort of delicacy issue there. I don't know if they'll survive or not. I don't know if there'll be a few cases of aerials getting knocked and damaged. It's more of a case of wait and see what happens with that one. Uh, the charger is five amp. So once you step up from a four amp to five amp charger, you're changing the game totally. Instead of going from a plastic uh, casing you can chuck in your bag, that's quite light-ish. You're looking at something with an aluminium housing as a heat sink and a fan in it. So, okay, you're getting 20% more charge but you're adding a lot of weight and noise to your charger so uh, is five amp the sweet spot maybe could you bump this up to a six amp charge and charge a board a little bit faster make it worth having that heat sink and fan noise um, I'm not sure I don't think I'll be carrying this charger around with me and charging up on rides I think it's a ride it once take it home charge it up kind of thing um, so it's not a huge deal but it's just a, a minor niggle. Another thing I found was the board doesn't really have a front and a back and the remote just has an arrow on it pointing up or down, which doesn't really correspond to anything because you don't know which way the board is facing. Um, as a solution to this, I'd like to see maybe just like a red dot and a blue dot on the top and the bottom of the remote. So, and maybe a red dot and a blue dot on each end of the board. So whichever the arrow is pointing at, you know which way the, um, the board is gonna go. Again, not a huge thing, but this should have been taken into consideration in the first place. So you know when you hit the trigger, which direction the board's actually gonna go in. And lastly, um, the battery. I did about 17 miles the other day. This was around the Box Hill area. So I went up a massive hill on a trail down the other side, up another private road, across some hills, down again. Um, did a bit more of a trail, turned around and came back. At one point, as I hit a hill towards the end of my ride, I did about 15 miles, the remote started vibrating and I kind of had a bit of a panic because I realized I was miles away from the car. I instantly turned around and crawled home about 12 miles an hour. 
so you don't want to get caught out with this thing in the middle of nowhere with no battery because it's just way too big you can't kick push it you can't really pull it it's not the sort of thing normally if someone runs out of battery in a group ride someone with a mountain board um, will just tow you that'll be no problem this thing is just too damn big it's too heavy it's too bulky there's too much resistance there's no way you're going to tow it so it's just one of those things where plan ahead be really careful um, again all these things aren't like bad points in the board they're not they're not huge deal breakers they're just little things you need to be aware of um, but saying that I've been riding this board for a little while and I've really been enjoying it I have to give it back to Pink Oak now and I, I really don't want to for £2,000 it's a real beast of a board it's a beautiful off-roader I know they're looking at making some mods for this maybe some foot straps so you can strap yourself in like a, a mountain board that would be pretty cool um, I would watch this space as far as Pink Oak go they're quite creative guys they've got a lot going on um, yeah Propel if you're watching this hook me up one of these boards they are really cool for £2,000 if you're looking for something that's a bit mental a bit of an off-roader you're going to have loads of fun with definitely worth checking it out if you're in the UK hit up Pink Oak they might be running some demo days soon as well so you can come down and try one out that's it for this week. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next time.